Hi everyone, this is Jonathan again with ThinkRF. I'm at the uh, uh, Pittsburgh CCA Mobile uh, Competitive Carriers Show. Um, and uh, here's our node, we've got a set up here, uh, collecting, collecting data. And I want to show you, this is what I found yesterday. Uh, second in our series of videos about cool stuff that we found. Hopefully you're as much of a geek about this kind of stuff as, uh, as I am. And, uh, and you find this stuff interesting. So what did I find here? Well, I'm still trying to figure it all out. Uh, I'm not that familiar with the spectrum environment in, uh, in the US, but a couple of things popped out. Um, and uh, we're gonna show the, uh, the video here or the, the data here, but first thing that popped out is 600 megahertz uh, spectrum, band 71. Not as well used as I thought it would be. A uh, couple of operators on it, I think it's uh, T-Mobile and, uh, and uh, Verizon have got a little bit in there, but there's about 30 megahertz uh, of unused spectrum. Not sure why it's not being used. Generally 600 megahertz is used for broad area coverage. It's a great band for that. Not being used that much here. Curious. Uh, second thing, interesting where the three major operators here, T-Mobile, Verizon, and AT&T, interesting how they have taken different strategies for where they put the bulk of their their broadband service so uh, i'm just gonna have to refer to my notes here so verizon uh has got 80 megahertz in um uh, uh, cbrs so that's where the bulk of their their uh their their bandwidth is coming from they've got four 20 megahertz channels uh, Verizon, on the other hand, oh, sorry, that was Verizon. T-Mobile, on the other hand, um, they've got, uh, let's see, 160 megahertz of 5G uh, in uh, mid-band. So, um, uh, Verizon's got theirs in CBRS. Uh, T-Mobile has got theirs in, uh, in 5G in mid-band. Great band for that sort of thing. Uh, meanwhile, AT&T, has got how much uh, have they got there? Uh, they've got uh, 80 megahertz of 5G in C band. So C band, CBRS, and mid band. All different strategies. Each of them going a different different route for how they're delivering broadband to the Pittsburgh market. Interesting. Um, curious why they're taking different approaches and curious what are your thoughts on the merits of those three different approaches who's getting the better uh, service here in Pittsburgh from these three carriers do you think based upon that curious what you what you think about that also curious about the 600 megahertz why isn't it being used effectively here in Pittsburgh what are your theories uh, the uh, the third thing that I noticed is as you guys probably all know um, T-Mobile acquired Sprint uh, a couple of years ago, and with it, they acquired Sprint's uh, Spectrum. A uh, big, big merger here in the U.S. Uh, what's interesting is T-Mobile uh, has uh, listed Sprint as their secondary PLMN in all of their LTE bands. However, 5G they're not sharing it with Sprint. Now, I'm sure the Sprint customers are able to roam on, on T-Mobile's network, but why do they have all of their LTE network set up for, for Sprint as a secondary PLM, but none of their 5G? Curious, especially given that uh, the that, that big mid-band range that they're using for the bulk of their 5G coverage, that came from Sprint. So. Not, not clear why that is. Again, interested in your thoughts. So lots of cool things here in Pittsburgh. Um, uh, let me know what you what you think, and uh, we'll see you next time.